Hey everybody, thanks for joining me at Border City Rock Talk where you get the best news and interviews. Uh, coming up, uh, I've got uh, in a couple of days, you'll see my interview I just had with Mike Reno of Lover Boy. And right now, I have one of my favorite singers of all time. I interviewed him a couple of years ago, uh, D. Snyder. And I have to say, before we get on, I was really humbled when I got that email for you requesting to come on my show. Thanks so much, D. Yeah, if we're so humbled, why did it take you a month to answer me? Well, I mean, you know, I'm a busy man here in Ontario, <laughs> locked down and finding things not to do. Okay. You're, you're the greatest, man. So um, I know you have a lot of things going on. First of all, you've got that, there's a documentary coming up uh, about the Tipper Gore stuff, um, the censorship. Yeah. Tell us yeah, about that, please. Uh, well, there's, there's, so, God, there's so many documentaries, and that's a huge... The censorship hearings of uh, 1985, um, you know, the PMRC hearings, as they known, the Filthy 15, are a very big topic right now because, you know, there's this whole censorship issue going on in the world today. Uh, yeah. The PC nation that we've got, the PC, it's international. Yeah. And uh, so people want to know my feelings about it. And a lot of times, you know, people are kind of looking back to learn from the past. Yeah. And the only thing we're learning is that the pendulum has swung and where that was a very conservative movement driven by the Reagan era. Yeah. Uh, now we find that the PC, the ultra sensitive, the meat, and I, I'm not anti PC, I'm not anti me too. I'm just saying it can get carried away where people are so hypersensitive and it's coming from the more liberal side is coming from the conserv the, uh, the 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 left the left instead of the right. So yeah. we've got then now we've got the uh, we've got the right screaming about freedom of speech, yeah. and the left saying, "Hey man, you can't say that." And back in the uh, '80s, it was the right saying, "Hey man, you can't say that," and the left screaming about freedom of speech. Well, I mean, it, it's it, it's in here in Canada, like obviously we see the woke movement too, but just yesterday, and this is a little bit obviously off the radar, but it's something silly, but everybody follows the other suit. We, we just had a storm, right? And when I was a kid, it was called a storm. Now it's a weather event. <laughs> yeah. Why, all, why won't they call it storm? Well, I, I, I haven't heard back from them, but I mean, all the, <laughs> all the different channels are calling it a weather event. It's just insane here. Yeah, yeah. Well, th th well, that's a whole nother. I think that's so much censorship no, as no, no, a right. as trying to steer perceptions. Yeah, like uh, Dick Cheney, um, the, the vice president of the George Bush, yeah. famously um, ch had the media change the phrase from global warming yeah. to global change, climate change, uh, climate change, climate change, and. That was a deliberate move on an ultra conservative guy because he felt the tone of global warming said said it is it's getting hotter. Yeah. Where climate change was just seems to be, you know, change happens. Change is a constant. It's yeah. normal. So I think there's people behind the scenes playing, manipulating verbiage that we use because they think that it whatever it does for their particular position it, it, I don't know how it protects the storm chasers but it apparently does yeah man and I yeah no I digressed off of that I, I segued uh, well not segued I just went off the ra off the rails on that one but yeah for, for censorship you know why to Facebook everybody I mean if if you if if who's running the show behind the scenes doesn't agree with it's something even not even controversial you get deplatformed you get Facebook jail. It's ridiculous. Yeah, fortunately, I'm uh, old, too old now for people to really care. Because now, at a certain age, you just become like, oh, you know, that old dude's just, you know, what they're like those old dudes. It's like your, it's like your grandpa who's a, who's who's a racist. You know, he's still shouting out, blurting out racist things. You know, oh, that's grandpa. That's how they did it back then. You know, <laughs> well, it's not acceptable. Sucks, but there's sort of this this crazy acceptance if you were grew up in that era you sort of you get a little yeah. more leeway you know well no i was gonna say that's not true in your case i mean you still have a great reach and i was gonna i should have introduced you saying you know what everybody obviously knows d snyder i don't have to you know make you know name the songs because if i if you don't know d snyder you really shouldn't be in uh, watching this you're too young and your parents should get you out of the room <laughs> yeah i guess so oh no doubt and that's the that's the 
problem for people is that I still, I grew up in a time where I could speak my mind and I still speak my mind and I'm not just this old guy speaking his mind, old guy with a following, an old guy with who people quote and will, you know, I, I, sometimes I can't believe that the media is quoting me on that. Well, D. Snyder said, you know, so, uh, that, yeah. but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to get to shoot my mouth off and have people listen. Well, speaking of censorship, do you think anybody maybe like Ted Nugent should be censored? <laughs> I don't think you should censor anybody. No, I, yeah, I agree. Ted was very, very upset with me because yeah. when I, you know, when the, the anti-vaxxer, anti-masker that he is got COVID, I laughed uncontrollably yeah. uh, and said he felt like he was dying. And I laughed and he wants an apology. Oh, yeah. And I'm stunned because he's a guy. I learned to shoot my mouth off from. He's the Motor City Madman. He he's the one who says he wants to stick an AR-15 up Hillary Clinton's cooch and you know yeah. and 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 give her. I mean, so I'm like, I can't believe that that guy is demanding an apology from me for shooting my mouth off. Well, I, dude, Ted, you taught me how to do it. Well, and the thing is, I mean, using language that reaches such an audience like. Uh, um, what did he say here? Just something, and then we'll get on to some nice stuff. Mindless idiot and dirtbag. He didn't say them directly at you. He said it in the context of his thing. So I'm not um, misleading people that are viewing. Go watch what he said. But I mean, I mean, sometimes uh, you gotta check what you say, and that's just my opinion. I don't know, Mr. Nugent. You know what? I wasn't. I wasn't upset by what he said. First of all, um, when I, I when I presented a Grammy award. In 1984 or 85, I said, this is the first time, a, and I opened the envelope, I said, this is the first time a dirtbag's ever done that. So I've called myself a dirtbag. <laughs> so so I said that on, on that international television. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, hey, he's a dirtbag, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, so, I mean, it really, uh, you know, mindless, uh, well, matter of opinion. You know, so, I mean, I wasn't upset by, by Nugent shooting his mouth off. I was just, I just thought it was kind of funny. That the guy I learned to shoot my, who taught me how to shoot my mouth off yeah. and blurt things out, uh, was upset because I shot my mouth off and I blurt things out about him. I guess that's where the line is drawn. Can't be about the per about about uh, Nuge. No, it can't be about Nuge. Yeah, I, I love you, Ted. I love you. I was just, you know, having fun at your expense, brother. That's all. Okay. All right, man. So um, I know that there's. Uh, I'm gonna ask you some Q and A questions and then. Um, I'll let you get to your next interview. Um, okay, everybody has got to check out uh, your last album's release in 2021. Leave us. By the way, out. you're welcome. You're welcome. By the Say way, what? because I I haven't talked about the Nugent thing, and everybody's been trying to get me oh, to respond. So, so now I responded. Exclusive. This will, this will be picked up by every online rock mag. The, the, the Dee Snyder, you know, because they, they've been well, wanting to respond. Well, so you can say so you'll get some coverage. You're welcome. Well, that, that's why you reached out to me. That's great. So uh, leave a scar. I mean, that was great. I want to get into uh, for the love of metal for two reasons for the love of something else. But for the love of metal, I mean, when I interviewed you a couple of years ago, that was um, the your last album. And on that album, there's that song by a, a Canadian that you sang with Alyssa Glues White uh dead hearts i mean uh take us into that song and i want to ask you i did uh, ask you then but who played the guitar solo in that song charlie belmore we will we'll, we'll go back with my guitar player Char i have two guitar players uh nick uh taz petrino and charlie belmore that was charlie's solo he also uh, co-wrote that song amazing amazing song and um wanted to do a, a duet i wanted a female voice in there on it yeah. Uh, and so, and um, Jamie Jasta brought up Alyssa, and I had met Alyssa, and I, I knew of her. And he said, and it's a very melodic song. And I said, dude, can she sing? Because all I ever heard from her, of her, her was her screaming voice, and she's got a great scream, you know, arch enemy. She, and he goes, no, dude, she could sing. And um, I was like, well, you know, so I started had faith in Jamie. I said, well, great. When we got her performance, I, I'm, I'm getting chills right now remembering. Well, that's it the was, song we're, we're playing right now, so yeah. Yeah, it was, I was, we were stunned. Yeah. And, 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 and Alyssa really welcomed the opportunity to show 
uh, as I often do when I've, I've been on Broadway and I've I've done songs that have been totally out of character to me for me from time to time, uh, and uh, and because I like to show, yeah, you know, it's, I you know me for singing like this, but it doesn't mean it's the only thing I'm capable of. So right. Alyssa really seized the opportunity, crushed it, wow. and uh, and it, and it's one of my favorite tracks on the record. Amazing. Yes, for sure. Um... So I'm going to ask you um, a few Q and A's, and then I'll let you get to your next interview. And I really appreciate your time. Appreciate your time again. Um, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. You didn't mention you mentioned for the love of metal, but you didn't mention for the oh, love of coffee. Oh, I was getting to that. Put that down. Put that down. For the love put of coffee. Okay. I was getting to that. Oh, okay. You, that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was going to get to that. Okay, so Q and A's. Okay, who will win the Memorial Cup in Canada? hockey team well i mean i think it goes out with goes without saying that the sue greyhounds will win the memorial cup perfect okay um iron maiden or judas priest and it's just going to be one priest all right uh they were much more of an influence on me than maiden maiden were more peers i have nothing but respect for them uh and i think they're one of the few 80s bands that Still, the music still holds up, but Priest. Okay. Uh, Benny Hill or George Carlin? George Carlin. Uh, you know, Benny's very English. I enjoy, and I enjoy his, you know, slapstick humor. Yeah. But, um, but George Carlin, uh, I, was a, or, I was an early George Carlin fan, and I remember going to see him in concert, believe it or not. And in the oh. concert I went to see him at, he, he, it was in a very wealthy neighborhood. And he came out and he didn't crack one joke. He just insulted the audience until they all walked out. <laughs> he said, you rich pieces of, and he just started cursing them out. And without, and at first we're la people were laughing and I was, I was a dirt bag. So I was like, I'm laughing too. And uh, yeah, everybody walked out. And that's when he left the stage and whenever he walked out. Yeah. Well, 1972, sure got, 73. Yeah. I'm sure he got paid if he was in that neighborhood. He got paid up. Woo! Yeah. He never came back. <laughs> okay. Um, Alyssa glues white. Should she uh, accept an interview invitation from me? Yes or no? That's a cure. That's a great question and answer. Sure, why not? I say yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Apples or oranges? We're almost done. Don't worry. Apples. Okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Okay. Tea. Yeah, to the extreme. Coffee, coffee, okay. coffee, well, coffee. Well, tell us about your coffee brand for the love of coffee. I'm sorry, I blew the. Yes, this, as in oh. getting all blurry, is. Um, pull it back. A pull it back a bit. Pull it back. Back, 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 back. Uh, it's not working. That's okay. Blurring I'll, out. I'll throw it's some. Blurring out. Here. For the love of coffee. <laughs> uh, I finally have a coffee collab with Dead Sled Coffee. Yeah. DeadSledCoffee.com if you want to offer, order it. And, yeah. um, I am a coffee junkie. Um, I was once nearly fired from Twisted Sister for drinking too much coffee. Who's Twisted Sister? Yeah, they threatened to fire me. And uh, mind you, these was this was four guys doing heavy drugs and drinking. I didn't drink. I didn't do any drugs. And they had to sit down with me and said, dude, you got to cut back on the caffeine. You're killing us. The druggies told me I was killing them because I was too hyped up. On coffee is the only drug I've used in my life, and um, I'm so excited. And I actually like, you know, chose the blend, and because uh, I love the, the Central American Guatemalan blend, and yeah. I really it's a truly a drinkable coffee. I hope people will check it out, not just for the novelty of it, because it's a damn good brew. Is it a good coffee? Because I, I would surely love to sample it. I think Natalie has my uh, address. Well, maybe she can get you some. We're going, we're doing. As a matter of fact. I got a new promotion coming up in the next round. I've signed three, I signed a number 300 bags of coffee. So they're going to be coming out limited run where they're all signed by me. Yeah. And uh, so maybe they'll, they'll send you one out of, to do a promotion. I'll tell you what, if I get a bag of that sent to me, I'll run around the city here and I will make them drink a cup and then they'll uh, well i mean you're gonna have to get another server because your uh sales are gonna go off the charts from ordering okay so. okay that'll, that'll be great okay so two more quick questions uh they're really uh easy okay uh, your dream date um your wife or canadian tennis star Jeannie bouchard 
Be careful. I'm sorry. This is going to be a, my answers are never uh, short. They say they got to back into it. Okay. Whenever, whenever me and my friends look at pick girls um, and say, Hey, which one you like, you know, which one you like, I mean, it's standard thing guys do. Sorry, ladies, but we do. And you, you, I'm sure you do it as well. And um, at some point, my bass player from Widowmaker, Mark Russell exploded at me. He goes, you always pick the one that looks like Suzette. And um, <laughs> I got a type. I just, that she's my type. I married my type. She's on every rock star's wives, the hottest rock star wives list. Yeah. And she's the only one that's not a model. Uh, they're all models. She's just a hot chick from Brooklyn, New York, from Brooklyn, New York, who made, did all her costumes and all her makeup yeah. and her hair, did the bone logo. She's been like behind, 45 years. We've been together. And so oh, in, a, in a heartbeat, uh, it's still Suzette. I know it sounds sappy, man, but I'm blessed oh. that, I, that I still feel that way. No, I've, uh, I, I understand. That's great. 45 years. I've been in a relationship uh, not that long. It's been about a year and a half with my cat. Everything You're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Last question, D. Uh, water or sand? But can't they both be together? I'm a beach guy. I live on the beach. So I like the water in the, with the sand. I can't have the sand without the water, and I don't like the water without the sand. So you're saying mud. No, I'm saying beach. Well, mud is water and sand. Life's a beach. No. Uh, not, uh, maybe, maybe in Canada it is, but I live in, in Belize and I live in LA and we're on the beach in both places. So well, you're in both sorry. Honestly, what you've, got a, you've got a place in Belize? Yes. That's awesome because um, you probably had seen the documentary of the um, um, McAfee uh, security guy. Yes, of course I have. Uh, I mean, he, yeah. They're still out to get him. Uh, but yeah, He's but, I, but I, I don't live where he lives. He lives in San Pedro. I live, there's no beach in San Pedro. I live literally on the beach. So yeah, so I can't separate the sand and the water. I'm sorry. Well, update, just let you know, uh, John's dead. Is he? Yeah, L last year, the year, or yeah, about last year, uh, something happened and he passed away. Why did I know that? Oh, well, well, I mean, I, I'm not close with him, uh, no, but I, I last heard he was back in the States. I had, and he had given some, but he walked around with a lot of bodyguards. There was people who wanted to take him out. And the oh, yeah. Belizean government, they were, they wanted him. I mean, he, you know, he, he was, they not suspected of murder. They knew he was a part of that, involved yeah. with that murder. And, uh, and he took off. So, well, well, there you go. Problem solved. Case well, closed. Well, I mean, that's why he came here for, uh, for news. So, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> <laughs> should people subscribe to my channel? Oh, absolutely. He needs more than the five who are currently watching. Come on, people. Seven. Help him out. Seven? We got seven, seven yeah. Well, that's including uh, well, my mother. She helps me out, too. So well, that's, that's good. She's good. Absolutely subscribe. You've got all... Who have you had on so far? Give me give me just a few of the names. Oh, geez. Uh, Harry Shear, Paul Shortino, Joel Hoekstra. Um, geez, it's hard to think. I mean, I've had... Okay, so, you, so you're basically you're going with the B crew. Gotcha. So you're trying to work your way up. Well, hopefully... D. Snyder will will take you to the next level. Yeah. Because uh, so yeah, I was impressed. I was I I like all those guys, but was not impressed. That's not the that's not the A group. What about Lexi Fox? A group. Lexi Fox, former Steel Panther. Not the A group. Not I the A group. Brian Adams. I've the, hopefully, this leads you to Rob Halford and Bruce Dickinson. And I'll, okay, what on the yeah. new show or on the old show? On the old show. Okay, new show. We're talking new show here. But you know what? I got D. Snyder today. You lied. What's that? <laughs> you lied. I lied. You said, you, yeah, you told you, that you, that you prom You told him it was going to be something different. Yeah, I'm not following. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, how you got D. Snyder was I sent you an email. Don't you remember your first? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Email? Well, I mean, I mean, I accepted is what I'm saying. Exactly. You accepted. It took a month. Uh, you accepted. They told me this was going to be a good show. That's how you lied. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, D. I really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, pleasure. Swing me a bag of that coffee. I'll uh, I'll drink it. All right. I'll say it through. And uh, go Sue Greyhounds. You rock. Hey, thanks, you D. Appreciate all it. Right. Take care, man. Bye bye. Bye.